I'm Alain Stellion, your host, the Midlife Empowerment Coach, and today I'm thrilled to introduce our guest, Roxanne Jones. Roxanne is an award-winning writer with 30 plus years of experience, was a contributing editor and writer for Palm Springs Life Magazine, and created the popular Boomer Haiku blog, which she ran for three years, and that's actually how I met her. She's currently downshifting into retirement and together with co-founder Leslie Inman has created Retirement Voices, an online community and blog to help women navigate the non-financial side of this major life transition. They're also, this is very exciting, co-authoring a book entitled Retirement Voices, Women Reveal What Life After Work Is Really Like. So Roxanne, we're gonna have to have you back when your book is out. Uh, maybe you and Leslie will both wanna come on, but in the meantime, just thrilled to have you and I can't wait to hear what you have to say, what you have to share about the top five surprises women discover in retirement. I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and to talk to you and, and everyone who's out there who um, I can't see. Um, so I wanted to first set the stage for, for how I happen to know what surprises women about retirement. It's not just me saying this. Um, but about three years ago, my friend Leslie, uh, who had retired for the third and final time, uh, started noticing women around her who'd already retired, and she saw some real variations in how they dealt with the transition. Uh, there were some who moved into retirement really easily. They just never skipped a beat. They took to retirement like the proverbial duck to water. There were others who struggled for a while. They, uh, it took them a while to get their sea legs, so to speak, and settle into this stage of life. And there were others, unfortunately, who never seemed to figure it out. They were kind of unhappy and, and rudderless uh, in their post-work lives. And Leslie, who's intensely curious, uh, wanted to understand this better. So she started looking for books or other resources about women in retirement that might explain it. And she discovered that most of what existed out there really focused on the financial side of retirement. There was little or nothing to do with the human side of this major life uh, transition, the emotional and social impacts of stepping away from a career. Around the same time, I was beginning to think about retirement myself. Um, I knew I wanted to downshift, not come to a hard stop. And since I'm a freelance writer, this path kind of made sense to me um, and seemed doable. And I figured I could just cut back on my work commitments in stages. But beyond that, I really didn't have any clear picture of what that transition might look or feel like. So over lunch one day, Leslie proposed the idea of doing some research to see if we could learn more about these psychosocial aspects of retirement by talking to women who'd already made the transition. Um, I think that is how women in general um, tend to get information and affirmation and reassurance is by talking to women who've been there, done that, whether it's having a baby or, or launching a career or winding one up. So, you know, in a, a perfectly self-serving kind of way, that sounded great to me. I, um, so we had some initial clients who'd already retired. And some common themes emerged, uh, particularly around identity, relationships, and how some women struggled to find a sense of purpose after they left the working world. And every single one of the women we talked to um, asked us if we were writing a book because it was something they wished they'd had when they left their careers behind. And there wasn't anything like that available. So we decided to write one. And our aim really is to create a kind of trip advisor uh, for women about retirement. It's, you know, if whether they're th thinking about it or they're already there, we hope they can learn from other women's insights and experience. So we started by creating a Retirement Voices website and developed a questionnaire. And then we invited retirement, retired women from around the world to answer the questionnaire. And nearly 300 women responded from, they were from 38 states, 10 countries outside the US, and there were even two women who were living on their sailboats. And they're primarily professional women, but they really come from a, from a wide, wide swath of, of professions. 
And one of the questions we asked women was what had surprised them, both positive and negative, about retirement. So today I'd like to share what they told us. By far, uh, far and away, the most frequent response to this question was how surprised women were by how busy they are in retirement. Um, so many of our respondents had held down big jobs, sometimes more than one. They've raised families, maintained a home, took care of pets, pursued personal interests, all while they were working. But they were still surprised at how busy or even busier they were once they left their careers. A lot of them commented, and I can relate to this, um, they initially feared they'd be bored in retirement, that they wouldn't have enough to do, they wouldn't be able to fill their time. Yet once they got into retirement, they wonder how they found the time to work. Um, one of our respondents, um, I'll read you what she said. She's a former IT project manager from Ohio. She put it this way. I'm surprised by how little time there is every day to do what I want to do and how little time there is left on earth to make a difference. How did I ever work? Um, for somebody making the transition, I found that tremendously reassuring that uh, I wasn't facing day after day of, of nothingness. The second surprise, another positive one, is how happy most of our respondents find themselves in retirement, especially once they're a couple of years into it. Um, a lot of them expressed how they see this as a milestone that they've achieved and, and something they've earned after you know, decades long of slogging away at a career. And uh, so many of them spoke to how they're enjoying this new sense of freedom and flexibility. And so many see it as an opportunity to find new purpose and meaning in their lives that this is a time of life that's filled with so many possibilities. They can nurture their creative side, they can travel, well, at least uh, pre-pandemic and, and, and soon once it's over. Uh, they can start a business, launch a new hobby, get in better shape physically, uh, rediscover something they were passionate about that they kind of put aside when they started working. Another respondent, she's a former middle school principal from British Columbia uh, in Canada said, I love being retired. In fact, three and a half years in, I often shamelessly shout it from the top of my lungs, often with an equally shameless yippee. So the third thing that surprised our, res our respondents was how retirement affected their workplace friendships. And th this was truly a uh, a surprise that blindsided a lot of women. Almost every respondent who mentioned this said that those friendships changed. They went from seeing their workmates every day, either in person or virtually if they worked remotely, to not at all. It was just a, it just closed down. And if you think about it, our primary common ground, the work we share, is gone when, when we retire and, and leave the workplace. And when that goes away, the relationship does too, often, sadly. Unfortunately, many of us, we just don't think about the fact that we might lose these friendships when we, we retire and we really are blindsided when it happens. I mean, that's not to say that we can't build genuine and lasting friendships at work. It's just that if we do, it appears to be a rarity based on what we heard from the women who answered our questionnaire. They told us that if they do maintain friendships with former workmates, it's usually because they, the retirees, take the initiative for maintaining contact. They're the ones who call up and schedule lunches or after work get, get togethers. Uh, they're the ones who email, text, and call. So if you're willing to make the effort to nurture your, your work relationships, you might be successful at keeping your work friends in your social circle. So just, you know, for, forewarned is forearmed. Number four, um, and this one was a tough one. Another aspect that took our respondents by surprise was the bias they felt directed toward them because they're older and no longer working. Some talked about feeling marginalized because people perceived that they no longer had any value 
since they weren't gainfully employed and contributing to society through work. One of our respondents wrote about how when she's asked, what do you do at a social event and says, I'm retired, she can just see the other person's eyes glaze over, especially if there's someone who's still working. Leslie even had a 40 something woman recently tell her, quote, people in your world should realize that once you retire, you're no longer vital. And one of the reasons our respondents felt so surprised by this is because these women don't feel old. They, they're still contributing to society in countless ways that don't require a paycheck. They're volunteering, they're mentoring, they're, they're doing caregiving for loved ones. The list goes on. Um, so it's, I think it's, it, it's a combination of no longer working and age and, and ageism, but it's, um, it's something to be aware of and be prepared for. I know a friend of mine, when she was um, thinking of retiring and, and sharing her decision with colleagues, she was pretty high up on the food chain in the financial services world. And she got all this feedback um, from other women about, ooh, don't say you're retired, you know, make up another word, you're, you're retooling, you're reinventing, you're, you're doing anything, but don't say you're retired because people are gonna think you're, you no longer have, you're not, you don't have anything to offer. And, and really the, the opposite is true. And finally, um, a number of our respondents spoke of how they came to realize that retirement's a process. It's not a one-time, one-and-done event. They initially thought they'd simply leave work one day and wake up retired, and that would be that. Um, but they were surprised to learn that there's often a period of adjustment or acclimation that can take weeks, months, or even years. And I often think of the analogy of the difference between getting married and being married. You know, you have this big wedding ceremony that's lots of fun and exciting, but then comes the reality of being married. You know, there are invariably issues to work through before you settle into this new state of being and, and way of life. And the same really does hold true for retirement. Um, it's, uh, it just, for some of us, it takes a while, especially um, if you jump off the cliff, if you will, and you know, you quit work on Friday and you wake up on Monday, um, there's a lot of, there may be a lot of adjustment um, to go through. So don't be surprised by that. And I think personally, what surprised me about what Leslie and I learned from the women who answered our questionnaire is how energized and motivated so many women are about this stage of life. I think I bought into the, the old model of retirement from our parents and our grandparents' generations. Um, you know, they, they kind of, they worked all their lives, got the gold watch and then kind of faded off into a life of leisure. There was no, um, there, there was no real sense of direction or purpose. But learning how many women are finding such a vibrant new sense of purpose and meaning, they're exploring or rediscovering sides of themselves that they set aside while they pursued a career, it's really opened my eyes to the possibility that this chapter of life represents. It's not all about loss or leaving something behind. Instead, there's an amazing new world to look forward to and that, that's just really a wonderful surprise. So Marianne has a, a question for you. She's the one I had made a note of her. She says she's been retired since 2006 and it's been a wonderful, surprising and delightful ride. So I asked in the comments, what's her secret? And she said, being willing to step out of her comfort zone. She, also, she says she's a lifelong learner and believes in a second act. Um, and she left, she asked a question. She asks, how did women find a way to meet new friends in retirement? Uh, she's finding it hard to find women in a similar situation. You know, it's interesting. We have a, a blog post that's been written and we've just kind of put it on the shelf because um, so much of what it, it was written before the pandemic kicked in. 
and so much of it relates to the the in person kinds of things. Um, but the, the and the takeaway, the overarching takeaway message of that post is cultivate the things that you like to do. You know, get clear on on the activities you enjoy, um, whether that's um, the woman I interviewed for this article loves making and writing about and drinking cocktails. She got herself a part-time gig doing bar reviews for the local newspaper. And it has given her this amazing opportunity to, to meet people. Um, and she had moved to um, Portland, Maine um, after when she retired. She didn't know anybody here. And she just dove in and got this gig. Um, she joined a bunch of different clubs, uh, a social club, uh, an outdoor sport. She loves cold weather, so she's certainly in the right place here in yep. Maine. And you know, has learned snowshoeing and downhill or cross country skiing. And um, and she said, you know, have have dinner parties and and think up unique, different themes and invite a friend to bring a friend and you just expand your social circle that way. Uh, if you like to read and, and, but, but you don't know anybody, join an existing book club or um, you know, check out at your library if, if there's a club to join. It's, if you get creative, if you just think about it, um, there are meetup groups. Um, I the, love meetups. And, and one of our um, listeners mentions an organization that I'm involved in also called the Transition Network, which is for mm. women 50 plus, um, and really a wonderful way to find community. Even now we've gone virtual. I'm actually in charge of the programming for the Chicago chapter. And so it's been really fun just to, um, to be able to connect virtually. Although of course the, the impetus is, uh, is, you know, the, the ideal is to be able to meet in person, but what this has allowed us is to meet women from all chapters. So because we've gone virtual, we've opened it up to everybody. So it's been very interesting, but there are organizations like the Transition Network and, and local organizations that cater to women who are um, retired or, uh, you know, in this case, it's 50 plus and sort of looking for friendships, looking for community, looking for to make an impact, looking to use their wisdom and experience uh, and, and, you know, in their communities, in their world um, that they've acquired through so, uh, so much of their lives. Yeah. And actually, Nancy, who joins us, who says, I'm preparing for my second act now. I hate the word retire. I will exit my career this summer and plan to go to culinary school. I'm a lifelong learner too, so hope to up my cooking skills and see where it takes me. And as you know from talking to me before, I also hate the word retired. I just feel like it's, um, it's you know, we live with it, but it, it uh, has an implication that I don't think is um, true for the word. You know, that's not, um, and I've heard people, you know, call it refired or, you know, find a, a different way to to talk about retirement because I just think it connotes uh, a certain um, departure from the world, a certain, you know, moving away from interaction and from community and from contribution that is just simply, certainly from your research and from my ex experience with, with women who are so vital uh, at 60, 70 and plus that it's just not the, that's not the truth of the situation. I think the word itself is kind of this double-edged sword. It's, it's good in that it defines a period of life and we all understand what that is. It's, right. you know, kind of you've, you've concluded your, your major career and you're on to the next. And what I mentioned a, a little while ago about, you know, our parents and grandparents um, idea of retirement, it really was a withdrawal in, yeah. in many ways. And and I, the baby boomers, you know, were kind of on that leading edge, this generation of women who are retiring in numbers that have never been seen before. You know, we broke glass ceilings in the workplace, and now we're kind of um, setting a, a new standard of what retirement is and can be. And I think it's, it's my hope, and it would be my aim that Sure, we can call it something else, but why don't we work to change the perception 
of what retirement is. And I think so many of us are doing that because there are so many women out there who have, have left their careers, but they're still so vital and so engaged and contributing in ways um, that are just stupendous. That's a fair point. You know, I, I, I see what you mean with that. And let's, let's change the perception rather than, you know, creating another word and, and then fighting whatever that, you know, the, the assumptions behind that word are going to be. I mean, it, I don't know if we can find a perfect word anyway. And retirement is very clear as to what it is. I just, I, you know, when you talk about the assumptions people make uh, when, you know, when somebody says they're retired, um, and I don't know, I mean, how much on the, of the onus is on us um, as we retire to communicate when we, when somebody asks what you do, I'm not sure the answer is I'm retired, period. You know, I, I mean, don't, I mean, I feel like the onus is on us to say, here's, you know, we, I don't know if you even need to say I'm retired. I mean, to just to, to be able to just say what you do with your, with your energy, with your vitality. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the questions we asked in our questionnaire was, um, what do you say when you're asked, what do you do? And um, some women spoke of, you know, being, they felt like they were a deer and caught in the headlights. It's like, oh my, you know, it, or some of them, the, the default was to say, well, I used to be. Yes, yes. Um, the old identity, yes. Right. Uh, and, you know, without a job title, they don't know how to define themselves. Yeah. Um, but a growing number of women, they kind of turn it around. Um, sometimes they're flip and they, they say, I do whatever I want. And, you know, and, and I love it. I have and total freedom. freedom. Yeah. If you're asking me how I spend my time, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, you know, yes, I think the onus is on us in a lot of ways to, to take charge and direct the conversation where we want it to go. Yeah, I love that. I do whatever I want. I'm gonna use that when I, uh, I don't know. It's like it's, you know, I mean, I'm in charge of my life now, and now, now, now it's for me. Now it's about me. Now it's not about the boss and the company and whatever it is I was doing before. Um, but I find sometimes that that can be very overwhelming for women to, you know, when they leave the workplace, and now what right like there's so many options and you know especially if they're in good health and they've got some financial um you know security and they're being told you can do whatever you want and you can start a nonprofit and you can and i think that seems just like too much for, for some women and i always tell them you know you don't you don't have to start a nonprofit you don't have to uh start a business you don't there's so many ways in which you can contribute that don't require you to uh, you know, spend a hundred percent of your time doing something like you're allowed to dabble and you're allowed to take your time figuring it out. Absolutely. And, and that's, um, one of the, the, the biggest takeaway messages that Leslie and I have, have learned from this process so far is that retirement is this intensely personal journey. There's mm -hmm. no one right way to do it. Um, it's different for every woman. You know, some, woman, some women may be fulfilled by um, reading and babysitting their grandchildren. Um, others will go out and start a nonprofit. I mean, one of our respondents had created a, a foundation to rebuild a, uh, a mission over in the Himalayas. I mean, you know, it, it is extraordinary, but the rest of us shouldn't feel intimidated if you know, the first six months of retirement, we want to spend catching up on our sleep um, uh, or sitting on the front porch with a book and a glass of wine. It, it, we don't have to have grand ambitions, um, but if we do, that's wonderful as well. And a, a bit of advice, we, I spoke um, a few months ago with a retirement coach and psychotherapist, and it was on the topic of, you know, when you are retired against your will. And, you, and, mm -hmm. and it, particularly if it happens suddenly, how do you deal with that? How do you figure out what to do next? And one of her first pieces of advice is just sit with it. You know, get, get quiet, get still, and listen to that voice inside of you about what are your priorities? What gives you joy? Um, how do you want to spend your time? What's, what's meaningful for you? Who are the people you want to be with? 
and and just get used to the uncertainty for a while, perhaps. Um, and and I, I just I'm a believer it will reveal itself to you what you're supposed to do. Yeah, and I I um I really resonate with what you're saying, and I think that that sitting and still and not doing, not you know either trying to go back in time or go forward in time, but just being in the present and being sitting with the discomfort is just such a challenge. And this reminds me of uh, what you're talking about, the, you know, William Bridges transitions book and the, um, I don't know if you've read that, but that's exactly what he talks about. He's, he's like, it's the foremost book on transitions. I highly recommend you, you take a look. It's, it's uh, called Transitions, William Bridges. And he talks about the three stages of transitions as uh, letting go, sitting in the neutral zone, and then moving forward. And what you're talking about is that very uncomfortable but necessary place of the neutral zone where we're not going back, we're not going forward, we're sitting with uncertainty and none of us like that because we like to know what's happening and what the plan is and we don't like to just sit there and have to just, but, but it's so essential and that's the place where ideas percolate and you know, uh, it, it's it's a, it's part of the journey. And I, I also love how you talk about retirement as not, you know, a one day when you have your retirement party and you get the watch and you're, you know, go off into the sunset, but it's a journey of figuring it out. Like mm -hmm. it's going to take time and it's okay if you have some false starts and it's okay if you decide, you know, I'm just going to play golf and whatever. And then now I'm bored. So now what can I do? Or I decide I wanted to do this and now I'm not so sure anymore. Like you get to dabble, you get to try things. You absolutely do. And what you decide today um, may be very different from where you want to focus six months from now or six years from now. You know, it, it, you evolve. It's, you don't have to make up your mind today how you're going to spend the rest of your life not working. Yeah. Well, on that note, I'm going to thank you so much for um, joining us today. And I'm going to encourage everybody watching to go to your um, website, retirementvoices.com. Um, do you want to share a little bit about what's on your website, what people can find in your blog? Yes. Well, we publish a blog every other Thursday and we delve into a lot of the topics that our, our book um, will eventually cover. And, um, you know, things relating to your sense of identity, our relationships, how we spend our time. We interview experts. Helen, you were um, a featured guest just yes. a couple of weeks ago talking about finding a sense of purpose in retirement. And um, every now and then we inject a, a, a humorous post as well, keeping it on the lighter side. Yes. And um, the comments really, um, the comments from readers can be enlightening too, you know, women sharing their own experiences in response. So we, we hope it's interactive and we'd love for your followers to, uh, to visit us. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your uh, mission with us and your passion. You're uh, really leading the way for so many women who are retiring and kind of trying to figure out what that looks like for them. And uh, it's just very empowering the way you think about it. And I, I love that. So bye. Bye.